My name is Peter Stevens. I'm a professor of orthopedic surgery at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, Utah. I will be presenting guided growth for angular correction about the knee. The objectives are to review current methods of guided growth, provide illustrative cases, and explain the decreasing role of osteotomy for pediatric limb deformity correction. Staples have been in use for several decades. However, problems observed include migration, bending, or breakage. This is a consequence of opposing a rigid structure against the very dynamic physis. So the fulcrum of the staple moves to the perimeter and the staple itself may fail. There are concerns about violating the physis with transphyseal screws. Although it is minimally invasive, it is unnecessary to drill a hole in the physis and place a large threaded implant. And there are concerns about how reversible this will be. Once again, you're opposing a rigid structure against a dynamic physis. With respect to staples, when they become loose, this necessitates unplanned surgery to remove, replace the staple, or revert to osteotomy. This led to the idea of a device that would expand with growth, but would not break or migrate. So the concept is that you have a flexible extraperiosteal tension band at the perimeter of the physis, where the cora of the deformity is, allowing growth to continue unopposed on the opposite side. I emphasize this is not a compressive device. This extends the window of opportunity and the safety of using the plates seen below from as young as age two until one year before maturity, as opposed to staples or screws. The instrumentation is very simple. This is a cannulated system employing a smooth, unthreaded 1.6 millimeter guide pin placed through a drill guide, followed by the 3.2 millimeter cannulated drill that has a drill stop shown here. This allows penetration of the cortex to just five millimeters, allowing insertion of the screws that are self-tapping. By doing this, you have better purchase of the screws. Typically, this is done under tourniquet control. Happily, the physes are virtually subcutaneous, but one would divide fascia or elevate muscles to reach the desired physis. Shown here is elevation of the vastus medialis to place a medial plate. The screws don't have to be parallel. In fact, it's most important that they do not violate the joint or the physis. And in the sagittal plane, be cautious to place them as mid-sagittal as possible, but certainly not anterior, which could produce recurvatum. There are some limitations of use, but if provided the physis is open, they can be used in any age patient, any size, any etiology, any direction or location. Contraindications are important. This includes physiologic deformities such as varus under age two and valgus under age six, skeletal maturity or extensive physeal damage. A typical case would be idiopathic genu valgum shown here. This teenage boy had progressive knee pain he had not had patellar dislocation, but there is some risk of such. The mechanical axis should bisect the knee as shown on the solid line. The case is shown here using the fluoroscopic placement of a small needle into the physis, which does not cause any damage. This allows localization of the plate so it's well centered and keeps the plate from exiting the wound. The drill pins are placed, the guide pins are placed as shown here, followed by the cannulated screws. This particular boy corrected in a matter of four months, which is more rapid than usual, but it's important to see them at least every three months and remove the implants upon correction. So at age 15, he's well corrected and the implants were removed. The goal of treatment is to restore the mechanical axis to the center of the knee or within zone plus one or minus one as shown here. In Blount's disease, shown on the uh, right, it is typical that we resort to osteotomies to correct the problem, thinking this must be done to correct rotation as well as angle. When you analyze the deformity, if you place the knee horizontally, you can see whether there's varus or valgus deformity in the femur as well as the tibia. It is helpful in young children to do an arthrogram outlining the joint for exact placement of the implant. It may take more time than the parents expect for correction. Here's some correction at eight months. 
and complete correction by 18 months. Interestingly and typically, the rotational deformity and the joint laxity also improved without cutting the bone. These children should be followed to maturity. If there is recurrence, the process may be repeated. A second illustrative case is this girl with post-traumatic valgus of her tibia, so-called Cozen's phenomena, with overgrowth shown on the left. We know that osteotomy is contraindicated. The arthrogram is shown here, outlining the condyles of the femur for exact placement of the implant shown here. The screws should engage the epiphysis, but it is okay to put them through cartilage, which will hold the screw. Gradually, you see improvement that is progressive. Note that she has overgrowth of that leg, partly from the fracture itself, but additionally, she was found to have a hemangioma on that leg, causing progressive overgrowth and ankle valgus with a three centimeter overgrowth on the involved leg. This is the hemangioma. Ankle valgus shown here with impingement. You may place a screw through the physis, such as the metazo technique, but it may bend, break, or migrate, as shown in this other patient, and may be difficult to remove. Therefore, the same concept can work at the ankle with placement of a tension band. You can see the growth line with progressive correction. And upon correction of the neutral mechanical axis, and reduction of the limb length. She's now eight years old. At this point, after two years of restraint, one can remove the metaphyseal screws, await further growth, and reinsert the screws. She has a two centimeter difference. This will continue to be monitored with growth. You can see the differential growth on the left ankle compared to the right with correction of valgus. Pediatric orthopedics is complex and challenging, requires patience, anticipation, and sometimes cunning. You may want to choose the least invasive option shown on the left compared to the more complex options available that have much greater expense and risk. This has become accepted worldwide using the tension band. The important feature for whatever implant you use is as low profile as possible with maximum flexibility. In conclusion, there is a wide range of applications for guided growth addressing diverse and uh, complex pathology with a modular solution. Complications are rare and readily managed. It's preferable to osteotomy. Thank you.